first step of installing Web Access Manager is to install the Web Access Manager directory. This directory can be almost any directories you want, but for this video, we'll be using the OpenLDAP directory, which is an open source directory provided by Evidian on its website. After launching the, the GUI, accept the licenses, choose a location to install the Web Access Manager directory, create the administrator for the directory itself. Different options are possible, but we'll keep everything in default so that it's clean and simple for this video. Feel free to make changes if you require them. At the end of the install, it's going to start and stop again so that we're going to be ready to install the Web Access Manager. Second step of installing the Web Access Manager is to install the Web Access Manager gateway. This gateway is going to be relying on the previously installed Web Access Manager directory, so one directory, to put in place all its configuration. Simply put, once you've started the Web Access Manager's gateway install, you'll just have to say a couple of choices onto which Web Access Manager directory server I'm going to be connecting to. This installer allows you to do a lot more things. It allows you to do first time install, migrations, and so on. After inputting all the information of the web directory, you'll be inputting the lo logging password of the administrator account. On this install, we've chose not to deploy a gateway by default. It's something we will be doing on our own. It's something that's going to be allowing us to see the whole process of creation of a portal on the Web Access Manager and to start up our user experience. This installer works the same way on Windows and on Linux. So all those steps are pretty much the same, or you could do it on command line on Linux. This installer, as I said, is also used to do updates, remote migrations, and many different steps. Once this install has been processed, we will be implementing a license file to start up the Web Access Manager. One of the required steps is also to create your test certificate authority. This test certificate authority is going to be used to generate test certificates for testing purposes, which is going to be implementing our SAML environment. It's going to be implementing our HTTPS servers. So just follow the step. This is not Once this install has been done, you'll see a summary of all the steps performed by the Web Access Manager's gateway installer. So you can check that everything has been going well. Next and final step of installing the Web Access Manager is to install the license file. In the license file itself, you'll see and find the required way of implementing it. But for the sake of this training, we'll be showing it to you. It's very simple. Just drag and drop into the config directory of the EWAM and rename it. Once you've done it, you can start the Web Access Manager by using its dedicated desktop icon. Once we've finished the install and we started the Web Access Manager, you can get access to the Web Access Manager's administration GUI from the link shown in the video. This is a Java application, so it's going to be launching directly on your desktop. Keep in mind that all those information are the ones you've given previously during the install. This unified GUI is going to be allowing you to do everything and every step of the Web Access Manager. For your convenience, it's been color coded and this color coding has been pushed throughout the whole configurations. So you will we'll see some of example of it. Now what we need to decide is how users are going to authenticate on our service and what kind of information we might want to send to SML services. As we've seen previously, authentication by form has been used for our testing purposes just to see if we could enter a portal. Now we will generate our own. 
mandatory fields, of course, are with the blue dot on the left. And there's a vi wide variety of choices that are offered out of the box by the Web Access Manager. Keep in mind that some of the policies require third-party services, such as SMS OTP or mail OTP will require you to have the proper SMS server and the email server. Generating our custom authentication policy is about choosing how users are going to perceive your website or your accesses. Again, for testing purposes, we're going to be using authentication by form again. Choosing the database of users we're going to be targeting, which is in this case the built-in authentication directory, which we've used previously. In cases of SAML, we need to have an injection database. Its purpose will be made more clear when we will be in the SAML Salesforce configuration. This is optional. This injection database is optional if you do not require SAML or federation protocols in general. There's a wide variety of changes you can make and bring to your custom authentication policy, depending on how you want to show it to users. For now, we're just going to be doing the mandatory fields. This link is the link that's going to be appearing on top of the URL. So choose whatever you want for testing purposes and we'll see the result. On to configuring Salesforce as a SAML application. Keep in mind that those steps are pretty much general for every installer of Web Access Manager. What we create is a dedicated authentication server, which is going to be handling for us the SAML communication with the target applications. So we're not limited to one. We can target as much applications that are configured. On this, we're going to be putting our custom authentication policy. There's a wide variety of configurations that are possible. I declare a SAML domain for the Salesforce configuration. I've imported the SAML metadata that's been provided to me by the Salesforce team. And now we configure the whole set of settings that are required for Salesforce. Keep in mind that we only kept for this purpose of this uh, training only the default settings, but as you've seen, there's a lot of different things we can do. Now, the injection databases is going to make more sense to you. It's about what information am I transmitting in the SAML assertions. SAML is based on an exchange of information, but the information that's required is identified on both sides. On the Web Access Manager side, you have a lot of varieties of way of doing it. So this is just one of the ways of sending in information. This large configuration pools allows you to have multiple scenarios very easily accessible. After understanding how the SAML protocol works for Salesforce, this is the configurations we need to do. We need to send in the email of a user. Once I've restarted the servers, I will be able to test this configuration. The fullness and the richness of configurations of Web Access Manager is a trait that's very important because implementations of different solutions of different SIS providers may vary and you need to be ready for any kind of situation. Once Web Access Manager will have restarted, we'll be putting in place and testing it with the one ident, which it has been I've configured on the Salesforce side. Of course, this is a configuration you can do by yourself as well, because Salesforce allows you to have a developer account for free. So you can create those configurations on the side. Feel free to test on other different services. We do it on a regular basis. Once I clicked on the Salesforce sides of things, it brings me to Web Access Manager, to my Web Access Manager, so that I can authenticate myself. Once I've authenticated with, again, my test account, 
it's going to send the email behind, which I've created and inputted, which is a Smith account. And that authenticates me directly. That concludes our training session on Web Access Manager and how to implement SAML for testing purposes. All those knowledge can be generally put in place for loads of different scenarios. Our products allows us to have loads and loads of different scenarios and it's not limited to what you've seen here. This is only some of the mandatory and few configurations you can do out of the box, but there's much more that you can do. Feel free to contact Evidion for more details.